Peace. This is James with Pan African Designs, and today I'm going to be um, sharing my 23andMe um, with the family. Um, I guess that's my fish in there throwing rocks. But anyway, I'm going to be sharing my 23andMe with the fam. Um, so I'm kind of excited about it. Um, I've been waiting um, to do this for a pretty good while. I'm doing, trying to make sure I do a good job as far as putting in my type of um, input that I would like to put into it, um, dealing with my own ancestry. Uh, I'm an African-American, I'm 51 years old, from Texas, um, to give a little background. Um, in the video, I'm gonna be sharing um, some of them, um, so a little bit of science, um, so as far as dealing with our genetics, um, a video on that, um, dealing with that and then I'm going to share a couple of other people's results um, it's the, um, this is going to be kind of interesting as far as dealing with their ancestry um, them being 100% either um, European and 100% African and then um, in contrast to my DNA which has a little admixture off in it um, that's what I want to kind of go over and share with the fam and then I'm going to um share what um the one of the leading um paleontologists in the genome project um Dr. um Sante Pavo, a European guy, he's one of the leading researchers dealing with um Neanderthal ancestry um and um dealing with the genetics and trying to put he's so they say trying to put the human tree back together or gain a better understanding of the human tree. Um, I have some simplistic answers, I mean questions that I have um, with some contrasting things that may not be contrasting. Um, but I, I want, um, what I want to do is definitely I want to point out some things that I think are suspicious. Um, within the DNA, um, my own DNA um, is contrasting. And then um, I want to um, share something that's contrasting with the um, with the um, with the um, 23andMe as well. Um, but what I'm talking about is contrasting with what Dr. Sante Pablo is saying. Um, and maybe it's not contrasting, um, so to speak, but I want a simplistic answer if I can get anything out of anybody um, that views this video. So I don't want to be too long-winded with this. So what I'm going to do, um, let me get to definitely to um, sharing my screen and we can get right into this so we can go ahead and, um, because I don't want this to be too lengthy, but it is going to be lengthy um, because I'm going to be going over this in um, a little bit different manner than most people who share their 23 and me. So um, let me go ahead and um, share my screen. Okay, what we have here, this is my 23andMe um, sign-in page. Um, as you can see, you will see the lavender color circle there. And then you will see my logo. Um, for the brand Pan African Designs in the um, to the right here, um, you'll also see um, the me off in the middle. That's my Facebook uh, or picture I took with the flag, and me and the hat and the mask, and, and I still got the same glasses on I got now. So that's me. Has my name up here at the top. This is the intro page. I don't want to be too long winded. Um, this is just ancestry composition. Um, I'm just going to do a quick rundown. Ancestry composition, um, DNA relatives um, list, 
your traits, Neanderthal ancestry, um, mitochondrial DNA, um, haplo group, but this is your mother's side of um, your line, and um, your paternal haplo group, which is your father's side of um, your DNA. Um, I think that women may have to pay to get this part of it. I'm not sure. I've seen one European woman that I, when I look through um, some other people that I don't, she was the only one woman that I've seen that had this and um, the female, the mitochondrial, um, the maternal line and the paternal line. So with that said, let me see. Um, dang it. Let me see if I can go down. Um, make sure I've gotten everything. Yeah, so those are pretty much this right here and anything on up I'm going to be dealing with. I'm going to be dealing with the maternal to put the, put the, and the paternal. I'm going to be dealing with the Neanderthal um, DNA. And I'm also going to be going over the ancestry composition. So with that said, I can close this out, I believe. And we're going to go to the next slide or the next page. And this is my and my personal ancestry composition. Um, what this does is it breaks down um, my 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 whole genetic pie, so to speak. Um, this is the, the genetic pie that I have, which I said most of it that's lavender, um, purplish, light color. That represents the African DNA that I have. Um, as you can see, that's very extensive. Um, and when you when you go down here, you'll see that same color. And then when you go over here, you'll see Africa, and it's gonna be this lavender, um, purple color all the way throughout, right? So this makes up this. This will be Native American, and notice that all of this is Native America. So they do not differentiate anybody that comes past this point. They're going to all be Native American. And this is a little bit more gold because I think they're saying that these people some kind of way got here. Evidently, they I did, and I do want to go into that and say that I do believe that these people all have something to do with these people. I think there's some sea bearing people and I think some kind of way they got over here into these Hawaiian islands and they got over here into the, the to the Americas. Um, some of the first to make it and they're of African feature down here in the Australias and so forth. So with that said, and, I, and I'm not sure why some of this is grayed out. Um, maybe someone could explain that to me, why this is grayed out here in North Africa, right here and so forth. Why is all that grayed out? I don't know. So let me move on to my personal um, um, chart. Um, the Sub-Saharan African is going to be 91.4%. Um, it was 918 but you can see the before and after on here. Um, if I click this, it's going to show what it was before. So they've actually strike some, they've struck, they've taken 4.4% um, off of what it was before on the before chart. I can click that maybe, um, but I'm not going to do that because I'm trying to keep this simple. So um, you got West African, and then West African 70%, Nigerian 31%, and as you can see, forth, so forth and so on. Um, Congolese and, and, and South, Southern East African, 19%, almost 20% of my DNA comes from the South, um, East and East Africa, Southern and Eastern Africa. So that's down and hit over in here. Um, and then I got um, in the Congo, Congo is, of course, down in here too as well. Um, South um, Angolia and Congolese, 16%, um, Southern East Africa and so forth. Um, so as you can see, that's pretty, 91.4%, um, 90, that's almost my whole genetic pie. Then we go to the European, it's 5.2, 5.1 um, is Northwestern European, and then you have the British and the European is um, 3.1, which that's probably to be expected. Someone probably got raped back during um, um, the slave trade or something like that, and um, it doesn't have to be... Um, and one thing that people have mixed up is that they think that if somebody had to been raped directly in their family, it could be someone that your family marries that had got um, raped by someone. It does not have to necessarily be um, your individual family member. And then that particular blood, blood gets into your um, family gene. So I'm not going to go that far. But what I wanted to um, say that I found that was interesting out of a lot of the people that um, I, I linked up with on here that has some actual Native American.
that 3.2 percent that you see if i were to go through and i may go through it um on another day if i were to go through that 3.2 you will see that it's very rare for african americans to have that much native american dna um often i mean most of us most of them have european um i don't i don't see too many people to have on my particular um friends list on um, the 23 and me i don't see too many people that um have the that that high of native american um ancestry and it says right here that my native american ancestry is 2.6 percent um so that's how it's not the chinese or the asian um, South Asian, that's 0. 0.6, and then you got the Indonesian and Thai and self so forth, that's 0. 0.4, which makes up a 4%, which makes that 3. But um, then you got broadly, this 0. 0.2, when you say broadly Chinese and Southern Eastern Asian, South, Southeastern Asian, um, then you got a 0. 0.2 that's unassigned, but I, I, I assigned that 0. 0.2 on up to Africa to give me a, a 1 point, what would that be, 1 point, one point, I mean, nine point, ninety-one point six instead of ninety-one point four, you know. But that's neither nor, nor here nor there. Now I did. Uh oh, I did. Um, excuse me. What happened, man? I don't know what happened. Okay, let me see if I can go back. Oh. Yeah, that's messed up. Okay, let me see. Um, okay, I think we're back. Okay, we're back where we were. Sorry. Um, so what I did do was um going down, kinda lost my train of thought with that little um hiccup there. Okay, but let me go down, okay, and this is this little pile. I don't want to show this too long. But see, if I keep clicking this, the more people are going to add up to this. And as I add these people on here, um, what it does, it gives me a comparative of um, some of the people that's in my, some of my family um, or somebody that's in my genetic tree. And if you look on here, a lot of these people have a lot of European, um, more European than I have. I won't say a lot. But some people have a lot more, some people have less. But if you notice, you don't see that much Indian DNA in none of these people. The Indian DNA represents, um, it represents the orange. And you notice all of these African, these people that look like Africans don't have that. They have very little. Now this, this, this queen right here, she has almost just as much as I do. This brother right here, I've actually linked up with him. He's my second cousin. That's why he has as much as he has and so forth with him. This is my nephew. Um, but the rest of these people, very little um, Indian DNA. But they got a lot of African DNA in them. You notice that. Um, and then if anything else, this, 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 the most of outside of African is going to be European. See, she has um, almost 35%. So you're just looking at this and just in contrast to what you would have. See, that's almost 35 or 25%. That's almost 25%. So you're just looking at this these pies and you gauge yourself like that. And then if, like I say, if you see, you see very little Indian DNA in all of these Africans. So we're not Indian. That's a good thing. That's a good way of going about me showing. Now watch this. When I go up to my pie, you will see a lot more orange off in there or gold, what we would call it, than most. Okay, so... That's my um, ancestry composition page. Now, what I want to do now, we've already went down to this. This right here is interesting too. I mean, it can take you and just show you when you click on them, it'll break everything down for you. So that's not really something that I want to go into now. So I'm going to go ahead and skip past this page. Um, what is this scientific detail? Um, not serious. Not no. I'm not going to go through that as well. All right. So I could go ahead and in, in finish this page off and go into the. Uh, Maternal um, haplogroup, um, and what like I said, what this is, this is the mother's line, and it tells the the migrational pattern, so to speak, um, from what they could um, guess um, through genetics of how um, my mother's line gets here. Um, they're gonna say that it's the L two the L two C line, and this line right here comes off comes off the L line. You got the L line, the L two line. And then you got the L2C line, see? 
So that's how you, you get and as you go down, it'll tell you different things about each one of these lines. But see, as you can see, the L line starts here in South East Africa, uh, which is the horn of um, where the um, most of the um, fossils and most of the um, where they say humanity starts. It went out right out there here in um, the Great Lakes and Congo region. Um, and that's where they say the cradle of um, civilization and humanity start, starts from uh, the, for um, the African, in my, in my personal opinion. Um, anyway, I don't want to be too long, but okay, and they say the Bantu, and then they'll tell you the Bantu expansion. And they'll give you a little bit more history as you go off into um, and read everything about your different um, genetic makeup. But this is very interesting um, to have this type of um, input. I know a lot of people don't believe in DNA, but um, you have to get a DNA test when you are um, when you when you want to find out if your child is um, yours or not. You have to get a DNA test to prove your innocence in a court of law. So um, we just have to take this at face value as to what the validity validity of it is for now. But um, this is all we have. So this is what we're presenting. But I'm I'm pleased with um with my results because I kind of knew that I would be um ninety something percent African and um that's what it's showing to prove. Um okay now my paternal haplo group, um which is my father's line is the EP two five two. Um this is another um marker starting off in that same region from the male line. Now, as you see, um, it starts off with the haplogroup A right here in um, East Africa in the, in the Great Lakes region, the, um, the Congo, um, Rwanda, Tanzania area. Um, and then they expand um, upward, um, going up the Nile, and then they they go out west, then they go back down south. But they And then they have another line that goes into Europe. Um, but that line is not part of my line. My line never leaves Europe. It goes actually to the east. I mean, back back to the west. Um, if I were to read this, I, 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 mean, I may need to read this so people won't think that I'm just um, being um, objective as far as my line not coming up out of um, Africa. But that's definitely what it says. If I were to click one of these, it'll say, um, maybe I do want to click right here. And it'll tell you that the um let me let me just read this one it says your path branched off again over sixty thousand years ago with the rise of the haplogroup e m96 also simply called the haplogroup e the common ancestor of e m69 may have lived in northeast africa or in the arabian peninsula since then his descendants have um, carried it carried it throughout the African continent and into the neighboring regions of Europe and uh, modern and uh, middle in the Middle East. But um, this must be the line, and I sure apologize for reading the wrong line. But that line right there is the line that comes um comes out of Africa. That E line right there. This line right here um, proves this line, which continues on to my last line. It um, shows that that line never left Africa, which is the EM19, I believe. Let me see. This is, it says this line where uh, it's another line that, and I, and I, I don't need to go through all this. Just trust me. If you were to read this, it will tell you that the line that goes all the way to these right here. It does not, um, this line that didn't come up out of Africa at all. It's, it branches off right here. And um, these lines that come up from, from up under here are the lines that go this way and then go back down into here. This line right here is, um, I forget what they said it was, but it turns into something else. Okay, but let me move on. Cause I, I would, uh, hold, uh, hold on. I also want to show, because this is going to be, um, in contrast to, to the uh, one, I think maybe the next uh, page that I click, it says you share ancestry um, 
you you share an an, an ain't you share an ancient paternal line, lineage with Pharaoh Ramesses the third, right? So this is what it says. Now let me make sure y'all see that this is me. It says James right there. It says that I share an um line. It says Pharaoh. It says Pharaoh Ramesses the third defended Egypt in three consecutive wars during his approximate thirty year reign. Um, by provoking um, dissent within his administration, um, cat, uh, catalyzed by mounting internal strife, one of Ramesses' lesser wise T, which this probably may be, hatched a, a plot to have him his her son, Pet, Petwa, of usurped the throne. So this is just, they're just telling the story about Ramesses. So I don't need to go any farther, but they're saying that I'm I, I, I'm a direct I got direct lineage to this particular um, um, dynasty of pharaohs or whatever. So now I'm just I just wanted to read that to just because I, it's going to be important um, when I go to the next maybe the next slide or the one next one after this one we'll see. I think the next one is going to be my family tree, which it is. So um, this. This um, slide right here shows my genetic tree as much as I could get. Now, I can move this around, and there's other people on this tree that have um, a direct line to me. Like, see, these people all come off my father's line. I don't know none of these people right here, but these people come off my father's line. All of them. They, they, they all come this way. So that's how I'm connected to them. And see, this is my mother's line, and I know all of them. You know what I'm saying? I know all of them, and I don't know these two people right here because they come off of, um, off of this Pearly, this Pearly Johnson. I don't know who they are. See, that would be his his father. Then I would have to find out who's Pearly's um, Pearly Johnson's brothers and sisters because that's who these people represent, and they dropping on down. See what I'm saying? They drop down to Pearly too. My grandma and them, or somebody like that, they were they cousins or something like that. That's my grandma's cousins. That's their second cousin. And this, I guess, they on the same line with me. They my third cousin. I don't know how this go, but this is um my family, and this is um what I've been able to put together on my family tree. I put all this together personally myself. My father, my mother, my sister, me. This is my nephew. This is my third or fourth cousin. This is my mother's cousin right here, Galen. And this is my grandmother's brother. That's my grandmother, my grandfather, his his parents, and her parents. So that's what I have so far. Um, hopefully, the family will continue to try to add more um, to the tree, um, and maybe they could share pictures so I can get this let get this tree in a better. Um, so I can fill it up if I can. So if anybody sees this, hopefully. Um, they can we can get in contact, um, but this is the last slide, and then I'll be going to um, video. And then I'll be closing out with my final top, uh, comments. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Um, this now this is where I may get a little bit into my personal um, commentary about my personal opinion. So for anyone listening after that point, um, just remember that these are my views, and uh, do not take them personal because this. It's my personal opinion and view. Okay, so with that said, let me go to this last slide um, with a little bit of conjecture because we just seen that they said that I was a direct descendant of the Pharaoh Ramesses III and Queen T and so forth. Okay, with that said, this is your um, all ancestry report. This is this is all reports, and what this does is it, it takes down the twenty one var uh, variations. Um, they, this is some kind of ne Neanderthal variations that they had came up with. Um, I didn't, I didn't read that. So maybe let me go to this first. Okay. The Neanderthal variations, um, it says, um, you have more Neanderthal DNA than zero of other, um, customers. So, uh, I don't know what that actually means, but. I guess they saying um, it says you have two percent Neanderthal DNA, so they saying I have a two I have two percent Neanderthal DNA.
It says, all together, your Neanderthal ancestry accounts for less, less than 2% of your DNA. So I have less than 2% um, Neanderthal DNA. Um, Neanderthal DNA traits and so forth. And that's that 5% that they attributed to me. And they'll tell you what all this is. But see, they'll start telling you negatives. If you read off into this, what does Neanderthal mean? They're going to go into some negatives that um, the traits that you can um, have when you become a Neanderthal. Um, why? I don't know. But anyway, let me um, exit out of this. Then I'll go to this full, um, the all reports. And, and this, this is just going over everything that I just read, which I just showed you. Um, the variations of the Neanderthal, which I had actually missed. Um, the, the maternal haplogroup, the paternal haplogroup the uh, ancestry composition, and then the, the breakdown of all the, of the particular um, genetics with, that's within me, um, within my genetic pie. And as you can see, it's, you, it's breaking that down once again, um, so I don't have to go over all of that. Hopefully I didn't click that. Um, but this is what I want to find, this, I want to show this interesting. Now, we remember, we just went, um, and seeing that I was supposed to have been a direct descendant of Ramesses III, right? So this says that Coptic Egyptian, you have 0.0%. It says Egyptian, you have 0.0%. Um, Ethiopian, Eritrea, you have 0.0%. Um, and let me see if it's any other African nations that they may say North African, you have zero, zero percent. Um, and I don't see Sudanese, you have zero point zero percent. Um, and what I want to know is how is that possible when they just told me that I was, um, I was a direct descendant of um, Ramesses the third. Now, let me tell you, um, that I have my own answers to my own to questions now only way that that could be possible if the people that are in that region now are not the people that were there at that particular time so if right if i'm direct sender of ramesses and i'm 91.4 or 90.8 and whatever you want to call it african then um how do i have zero percent egyptian blood now um or from what this particular chart is showing, and that's the only the only um, plausible answer would be is that those people are not the same people that's there now. You see what I'm saying? So we got to be careful when we dealing with this because this is a question that they're gonna have to answer. How is this possible? So this is a, this is question number one for 23 and Me. Answer this question: How can someone be um, a descendant of a pharaoh? but yet not have any Egyptian um, ancestry or Sudanese ancestry or East African ancestry or North African ancestry whatsoever. So, okay, I will. that's going to end my presentation for the 23andMe. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I wasn't too long with it. And now what we'll do is we'll go directly off into the, um, the next page, which is the Pablo... Um, San Cervante Pablo and the Neanderthal ancestry and modern day humans. Um, in this video, what I will be doing is I'll be muting my mic and then I definitely will be um, coming back or stopping the video with some things that I may want to have some conjecture to. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into the video. And then, um, like I said, I'll be stopping it, so I'll be forewarning you that I, I will be stopping and putting a little bit of commentary, um, maybe to try to help and simplify for those that don't understand some of the stuff that he's saying. Um, I've been watching this guy um, for the last four years now, four, maybe five. So um, just check the video out, and then, I'll, like I said, I'll, I'll come back in a second. And I guess it just goes to say that you should never make predictions in science, particularly not negative predictions, <laughs> because you're generally overtaken. And what overtakes you is generally technology. So what I hadn't anticipated that came around at the beginning of the millennium 
were technologies to sequence millions and billions of DNA fragments rapidly and inexpensively. So you could sort of just look at all the DNA you could extract from such a fossil, sequence all the DNA in it, make your own little database of what's in this bone and start comparing it to the human genome that then became available and other genomes. And we were very lucky to be able to apply for and get funding for a five-year project to then improve the techniques with which extract short little fragments from the bones and convert them efficiently to form you could feed into such sequencing machines. So we got a lot better in that process. And we then looked a lot uh, around Europe for, for places to find good bones and ended up at this site in southern Europe, in Croatia, Vindia Cave, where we focused on three different bones from three different Neanderthals and went and sequenced around a billion DNA molecules from those bones. Most of these molecules then come from bacterial DNA and fungal DNA in the bone, but we could then map some of these molecules to the human gene, taking these modifications that exist there into account. So in 2010, we had sequenced so much to each position in the genome had statistically been seen once. But that means that some places are seen once, some are seen two times, and many others are not seen at all. So we had then a little over half the Neanderthal genome that we'd seen once or more. But you could begin to ask questions. And the, one of the first questions we were really interested in was this question. What have happened when modern humans met Neanderthals? Did one mix with each other or not? So what you would expect if modern humans mixed with Neanderthals in Europe would of course be that Europeans today should share more genetic variants with Neanderthals than people in Africa where Neanderthals have never existed. So there's no reason to think African ancestors would ever have seen Neanderthals or mixed with them. So we could ask that then in some very simple ways. We have the Neanderthal Okay, so let me stop it right there. So, um, as you can see, they have the French, the Neanderthal, and the Europe, Yoruba. Um, the Neanderthal is located in Europe. Um, as a matter of fact, let me go back a little bit right here, as a matter of fact, um, where it says Europeans should share more variations with um, Neanderthals than um, Africans. Expectations. And what their hypothesis is that Africans, which they're calling modern humans, um, came out of the Levant and met another another species of human like species, another human like species, excuse me. Which, which they're um, coined or which they've turned a name the Neanderthal based off of a cave that they found somewhere around here. Um, they also later find another, I'm jumping ahead here, but they also find another type of um, human-like species out this way, which, which, which represents the Asian population, which they're calling the Den Denisovans. So um, what they're saying is the Africans come out and then they meet the particular other species and then they, they mix and procreate to make all of the other species that wind up going into the Americas. So that's their hypothesis, and then I'm gonna let it play, and then um, if I have something else to interject on, I will. ...would ever have seen Neanderthals or mixed with them. So we could ask that then in some very simple ways. We have the Neanderthal genome here from Croatia. You could compare a European individual at the time we thought uh, we sequenced one individual from Europe to high quality, of course a French person is what we thought was the most typical European, so we did that, <laughs> and an African individual, and then just look for any places these two individuals differ from each other, the European person, the African individual, and see how often does the Neanderthal match the European and the African. If there had been no contribution in Europe, it should be 50-50, and to my surprise, 
we found that it was statistically significantly more matching to the European person than the African person, suggesting there could have been a contribution there from Neanderthals. Even more surprising was that when we did this with a Chinese person and an African person, we again saw more matching, although most people would say there had never been Neanderthals in China. Some people would debate that, but when we then went to Papua New Guinea, where for sure there had never been Neanderthals, we again see this. So no matter where we looked, outside sub-Saharan Africa, so in North Africa and the whole rest of the world, we find this additional matching to the Neanderthal. And that then led to this question. So what he just said, to simplify, is once African left out of the Levant, they procreated and again, the the Neanderthal that was in the in, in the in the West had less had had that the Europeans when they when they when they did the sequencing of the Neanderthal DNA with the European had more likeness and DNA strands than, than the African. When they went to Asia, again, they had more strands that matched the Neanderthal than with the African. Again. Thirdly, when they go into Papua New Guinea, they find more Neanderthal DNA than they do with the African. Also, and I, th and I think they're um, saying in Australia, the same thing. Neanderthal DNA it was in all of these species in a more variant rate. Um, and in some cases, down this, side, this further south, there's no Neanderthal DNA in some of these people. And I'm going to show you that. Um, later on, and then there, these people are living right now today. So let me go ahead and continue. Which are largely sort of hold up for the test of time, suggesting that when modern humans spread in Africa and then started spreading out of Africa. Also, the trick that they keep saying, instead of saying when Africans came out, they keep saying modern human. Watch that trick. Africa that presumably came through the Middle East, and we know there were Neanderthals in the Middle East, and if these early modern humans outside Africa then mixed with Neanderthals, they could then carry this Neanderthal component with them, so to say, to the rest of the world, also to parts of the world where there had never been Neanderthals, to the extent that no matter where you come from, if your ancestors outside Africa, one to two percent of the genome come from Neanderthals. So it was very sort of satisfying. There were lots of follow-up of that in the scientific literature quite rapidly after uh, we published this. Uh, but we also found out indeed that lots of the general public turned out to be very interested in this. And I can never stop myself from pointing out that we started getting lots of emails and letters from people who self-identified as Neanderthals. <laughs> and after a while, I started seeing a pattern in this communication, sort of mainly men who say they are Neanderthals, <laughs> and very few women who claim they are Neanderthals and want to contribute to us. So, you know, I, I presented this to my group as my research. I count emails. And they're, of course, hypercritical of anything I do. So they say this is just ascertainment. Men are more interested in molecular genetics. Now, I got a, excuse me, I got a different um, take on this particular um, chart that he shows here. Um, Europeans want to retain being European, whereas European women don't want to retain being Europeans. Um, why would European women not want to become retained being European? That is the question. What, 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 why wouldn't they want to um, embrace being European? And um, I'll answer that question um, later on in this, in this, in this, um, in this, well, in this interview. So um, let me go ahead and go to the actual 20 and three, tw to the 23 and me, um, videos that I'm going to share. Um, I'm going to share, these are pretty short and you see I've already kind of went past this, but these are Europeans and they're going to give um, 
this is a European male, and he's going to give his 23 me results. Um, and he's gonna. This is gonna be a little bit more extensive than the other two videos that I have on the Europeans, where they're gonna show that they have no African ancestry whatsoever. Now, the question is, if everybody that is supposed to be African, how do these people have non-African DNA? Okay, so that's my question to Sante Pablo. Um, also, that's my question to 23andMe. So with that said, um, let's play the video. So now let's go and look at what the results look like. So when you click the link in the email and enter your login details, you should end up on a landing page that looks something like this. If you don't, just click on the Ancestry tab and you should end up here. So right away, you're going to see a summary of your ancestry composition. So here you can see that I got 46.8% French and German, 32% British and Irish, and 1% Spanish and Portuguese. Notice his um, genetic pie. It has no turquoise, it has no purple, it has no lavender or anything like that over throughout the whole entire pot. Now this is fairly close to what I was expecting. I've done quite a bit of research into my family tree and I know that most of the branches came to Canada from Germany in about the year 1750. So I was expecting German to come up number one Hello. and it did. I know that my maternal grandmother's side of the family came from Ireland. So I was expecting uh, at least 25% Irish and it looks like I ended up with more than that. There must be some other British or Irish individuals uh, that intermarried into the other branches of my family. I do know that I had a distant ancestor who was a Sephardic Jew. Sephardic Jews come from Spain or Portugal. So this 1% must be related to that ancestor. And you'll notice that these percentages don't add up to 100%, and I'll explain that in just a moment. So let's look at the more detailed report. So we click here, view your ancestry composition, and it takes us to a map and a table here on the left that breaks things down further. So my ancestry is 100% European, and that's why you only see this part of the map colored. If you have ancestry from other... Now, as you just seen, this guy, genetic power, and his, his, um, his genetic makeup in contrast to what mine was saying, is he's 100% European. And as you can see, you see him nowhere else on the, on the, on the globe besides somewhere in Europe. So that means that he has no admixture with any Africans, any Asians, any Native Americans, or anyone. So let me continue. Other parts of the world, you're going to see those light up in color, and they'll be shown over here as well. So again, we see French and German up here at the top, followed by British and Irish. Due to my own research, I know that this is probably mostly German, and this is probably mostly Irish. And here's a few results I wasn't necessarily expecting. I've got a tiny bit of Scandinavian and a tiny bit of Sardinian. But I want to point out these sections here at the bottom broadly. So it looks as though 14.8% they call broadly Northwestern European. Now Northwestern Europe is quite a large uh, portion here. So basically what that means is those portions of my DNA, uh, they weren't able to pinpoint it any better than just this very broad category. So it's likely that this part of my DNA probably fits back up here in the German. And uh, that's why this number's a little lower than I had been expecting. But if you add this percentage into there, it bumps it up. Now you can go into a little bit more detail. If you click on these down arrows, and then view report. 
Okay, I don't think I have to go any further because y'all already know how to break down how I broke down my particular chart. So there's no need to go in any further into his chart. But like I said, I want to just show documentation because documentation is important. Um, that there are people out here um, with a genetic uh, makeup of 100% of, a, of a, one of the other African or um, European. So let me go on to the next one um, to be a little bit repetitive. So um, these next one will be like one or two minutes. And then the, we'll go on to the last one, which is the African sisters, a little bit more extensive. And after that, I'll close out. DNA results with you. I was born in Norway, and both my parents are full Norwegian, so it'll be interesting to see the results, uh, which shows I am 100% Europe and 89% Scandinavian. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot. 9% Irish. That's a little surprising. The low confidence region is Great Britain, less than 1%, and Europe West, less than 1%. That's kind of interesting. I knew I was 100%, or knew <laughs> I was Scandinavian, but I didn't know it was total 100%. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. As we can see, there's another European. That's 100% European. She's on 98% of that. It's the Scandinavian. Who knew? Okay. So let me go to go on to the next one. Well, but this guy right here, he kind of sounds funny. But anyway, check this out. So I have two videos. The first one that you'll see. I don't know. I sound like I'm drugged out or something. I don't know. I, I guess I didn't process my thoughts right. But it's the video before I knew what my ancestry was. And then I have the second video, which is me finding out. So I hope you enjoy this. Thank you. Hi, YouTube. So I have my DNA kit. I am about to submit it off. Um, I'm not going to show you me putting that together. Uh, I just wanted to give a brief information on where I think I'm from. Um, I know for sure I'm European, of course. I know for sure I'm Native American. Um, but what else after that? I have no clue. Uh. Okay, YouTube. So, all the stuff I said in the previous video, which this is the video after it, uh, was completely wrong. But about being anything other than white or European. I'm 100% European, and I'll show you on the screen what my percentages are so you can see it for yourself. But for the European side, the only thing that's interesting is I got Swedish, but I'm a 82% English, Welsh, and Northwestern European, which is primarily the British Isles. 12% Irish, Scottish, um, so somewhere along that line, which I already knew. 5% Swedish, which is very interesting because there's nothing in my family history or any records or any stories about us even being from Sweden. Um, and then 1% Germanic, which I get told a lot of time that I look Germanic, but I guess I'm really not Germanic. I'm, I guess I'm mainly from the British Isles and Ireland. Um, and yeah, so... I'm 100% white. You know, even though I do know I have Native American grandmothers way back when, uh, DNA is really tricky and very complex. And it is possible to dilute certain bloodlines so much that it does not show up in your DNA primarily. Well, that's it for him. So you can see... His DNA says he's 100% white, even though he's in denial. That um, he he believes that he has some type of Native American ancestry, which uh, based on DNA, that's false. 
So we can move on from him. But I showed three different cases where people have taken their Europeans, have taken their Euro, take, taken their DNA test, and um, it showed that they were 100% European. Um, I think that's fascinating because it shows that not everyone has admixture in them. And I think that's interesting because if every somebody can be 100% European, that means that they never mixed with an African. And um, how is that possible if everybody's supposed to be human? Um, then you have this some people that's 100% African. So, and I'm going to show that right now. And this is going to be very interesting because this, this African sister is light-skinned. And she's going to, and she's from South Africa. And she's going to, this is really mind-blowing as to um, her DNA um, results. And how it's going to prove that we come in all different shades and that you can be 100% African and not have any admixture and be disliked. So with that said, let me share this video. This is going to be the most lengthy of, of, of them all. And I think I might have one interjection and not an interjection in, um, in, um, as opposing to what she's saying. But I just wanted to point out that she's going to be hip to, to the maybe the one thing that you can really tell someone um if someone's african or not so um let's go let this video play it's gonna be 17 minutes um i hope you're enjoying um the the in-depth um analysis um it's not as um brief and to the point as most but i like to be very detailed and then i'll come back with my final breakdown of what i think about all this and then i'll close out so with that said enjoy the video to welcome you back uh, to my channel and say hi but the reason for this video is because my ancestral results are in I am like so excited okay I have been waiting for eight weeks for these results and they are finally here and uh, for those who are new to my channel please click the button subscribe and make sure that you like the video and to make sure that you get notifications by clicking the bell next to the subscribe button but anyway let me get with it so let me take off my glasses by the way uh, so you can see my features but anyway so I did my ancestry uh, DNA true ancestry uh, com and I um, I just received the results today and I had to make this video so uh, basically let me start with my expectations what did I expect so as I've already said a thousand times I was born and raised in South Africa so I've always expected that I would be black okay because that's what I identify as that's what I grew up as. So I've always assumed that I would be black based on my culture. But I also expected that I would probably have a little bit of, uh, I would, no, I thought at first I would have a lot of coisa in me because I'm short, light skin, high cheekbones. Um, they are somewhere under those cheeks okay <laughs> um i and also like i have squinty eyes and also we have a long history uh Kosas, my tribe have a long history with the Khoisan. um so i thought i would have that but i also thought that i would have you know like some asian in me because a lot of Khoisan have mongoloid or asiatic features so i assumed that i would have um, some Asian in me and I have an Asian friend and we look like twins so <laughs> again I thought I would I would be you know like maybe I have I would be like maybe 25% Asian or something like that 
But then again, in South Africa, we have a lot of white people. So I thought that I would be like, uh, you know, like have some white in me, maybe 25% or even 50%. Uh, but again, <laughs> where, I mean, I, I knew that that was kind of like, you know, like, pretty much impossible because of racism in South Africa, but I could have been, right? Also, I assumed that, like, I looked at my dance move, I was like, my dance moves are questionable, maybe there's no way that I'm 100% black. I cannot sing to save my life, there's no way I'm 100% black, okay? I also thought about, you know, like my daughter, my kids, people always ask them if they are mixed and I thought maybe they are throwback or something like that. And um, so I thought about, you know, like a lot of things and I'm Tosa. If you don't know, check out my ethnicity tag video, but I am Tosa and so I always had the expectation that I'm African, but I am also very, very light skin, and so, and by the way, I didn't bleach my skin. People have said that I bleached my skin. No, I didn't. This is how I was born. I was even lighter when I was younger, but as I grow older, I'm a little bit darker, but anyway. But I also thought that maybe I have a mild form of albinism, which is was to me the more plausible uh, um, theory about who I am because obviously I have an uh, someone who has albinism in my family so I just assumed that that was the case but my hair you know like I mean I've dyed it now but my hair is pretty much like uh, dark brown naturally um, so but so I expected those things but um, as I'm about to show you my results shocked me they blew my mind uh, mainly because, as I said, I've always been a proud African girl, you know, like, I've, I, you know, you've seen my videos, I, when I went to South Africa, I said, this is the land of my forefathers, this is where I was, you know, like I'm from, this is it, no further than this. So, as a result, I uh, will show you that might not be the case. Without further ado, let me show you my results. So I pre-recorded this because I wanted to make sure that I can show you the screen. Okay, here are my results. You can see them for yourself. I am 100% African. Oh my God, I am so like blown away by this because uh, I just did not believe it to be true, even though I knew it in my heart that that was the case. But the fact that there is scientific proof that I am actually 100% African is just mind-blowing to me. And I did have expectations, and I knew what I was. I just didn't think that it would be confirmed, okay? So bear with me as I am just like shocked, shocked, and I'll tell you why, okay? But let's look at the results. So I am Southeastern Bantu, 87% of me is Southeastern Bantu, okay? So Southeastern Bantu is South Africa, which is where I was born, Kenya, Namibia, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Angola, Tanzania, Mozambique, Uganda, okay? And um, so in, the, in that area, like, I mean, in, in, in this part of the world, you find all sorts of people. You find light-skinned people. You, you find the darkest people really on earth. I shouldn't say that because I don't know that, but you find the darkest people to the lightest to albinism in this area. So I was kind of like really shocked. And then I have 13% South Central Hunter Gatherers. So again, they're from South Africa, Namibia, Botswana, and Congo area. Again, I was born in South Africa, so it absolutely makes sense. But uh, the, just to give you a back information, so the Khoisan people, 
they are very closely related to my tribe, which is the Kosa tribe. I mean, not only my tribe, but other South Afri Southern African tribes as well, right? But I'm talking from the perspective of my tribe. Linguistically, we use the same cliques, um, and uh, obviously, like, uh, we have very similar features. You can find Kosa people who look exactly like uh, the Khoisan people. So I was shocked that I have only said in percent. I expected a lot more because I always assume that my features, you know, like the light skin, the buttocks, the um, flat nose, and, you know, like my eyes, everything, I always assume that that was because of the Khoisan people. And, um, and I mean, largely it could be that, you know, like I have more of their features that are external than anything else. Um, but anyway, so the uh, Bantu people, of course, I always uh, laugh uh, with my friend who's from Kenya. Whenever she writes in her language, I can make out some of the words, and she can make out some of the words from my language. So we are obviously like one people. So here's the thing. So I have nothing outside of Africa. Pretty much everything I am is from Southern Africa. I have zero from North Africa and West Africa. I have zero Asian. I've always assumed I have Asians, but again, the Khoisan people have Mongoloid or, Asi uh, or Asian features, so I always assume that that was because of that. And then I have zero Europe, which again, I mean, I could have suspected that I have European in me because South Africa has white people as you already know. My niece, who is half white, uh, we have the same skin color, skin tone, even though, you know, like uh, she's 50% white and I'm 100% black. And um, it, it's just like mind-blowing. The only difference between me and her is the hair because her hair you can tell that she's mixed and my hair you can tell that I'm not really so as you could just see the queen just broke down her genetics although through a different source a different um, company and she's 100% southern African uh, she's very light skinned um, but the only difference she um, made between her and a mixed African is hair texture. That is very significant to note when you have Africans of very light um, complexion. So that is the that is how you identify someone of admixture um, all over this planet, and it's just as simple as that. Um, the more kinkier the hair, the more it um, identifies someone as coming from the continent of Africa. Um, as I showed earlier, through all of the um, the people that was on my genetic um, line, most of those people that, if you were to say that um, if all of those people were at least 80 to 90 to 75 percent African, and in contrast to very little um, Native American DNA, it's, it's emphatic um, documentation and proof that um, we do come from this particular continent. And I think it's a great thing because this is the great place to come from. It's the best place on the planet to come from, as a matter of fact. Um, we have to be proud of our heritage and our lineage. Um, and I'm, I'm going to let this play just to let this let this queen um, boast and brag about, you know, her genetics because she's very proud of it as she should be. And then I'm going to close out um, with my final analysis. Really, it's the only thing that says that I'm I'm black when you look on the surface. And, uh, so. Uh, other regions tested. I have zero America passes. Islander, I have zero um, uh, West Asia, which is the Caucasus. Like if I was Caucasian, 
I would have I would have traces from that region, but I have nothing also from the Middle East. So it is like just mind blowing. Uh, and um, I mean, it just shows, you know, like uh, the conclusions that we draw about ourselves, about people around us, could be completely wrong. Now that you've seen my results, what do you guys think? So you are looking at a pure African girl. My DNA, as me, is nowhere else to be found other than in Southern Africa. So how do I feel about that? I'm 100% happy because I've never knew, I, I've always knew that that's where I'm from. So, but the thing is, is that, let me go back. Growing up in South Africa, pretty much every kid would tease me and say, whitey, 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 okay? So, I okay? And I mean, I didn't like it, but I accepted it because in Africa, if you're being bullied, you either crumble or you just continue to keep on stepping, right? But anyway, so um, when I was growing up, pretty much everyone assumed that I was mixed, okay? Even black people assumed that I was mixed, so they would call me whitey, but I, uh, I, I actually thought that, you know, like at some point in my mind, I thought maybe, you know, like there's some truth in it because I was born in a mixed neighborhood in South Africa, so you could have, you know, like I could have been mixed, but um, my mom, you know, like uh, she's always told me that, you know, like, we are black and so I never questioned that other than you know like few times when people assumed that I wasn't black and I grew up in a black neighborhood so the, in South Africa there are colored people which are mixed people and they always assume that I'm colored right they will speak Afrikaans to me and they are shocked when I cannot speak Afrikaans and then white people assume that I was colored when I moved to America, especially when I still had my relaxed hair and everything, you know, because my hair is really the only thing that says 100% African. But anyway, so when I, when I first moved to America, I, I remember going to a hospital. Everywhere I went, people would say, would speak to me in Spanish because they assumed that I was either Puerto Rican or Hispanic somehow. And, um, and, and I remember, like, uh, I mean, when I went to the hospital, they would give me a Hispanic translator uh, because at the time my accent was even thicker than it is today. And, um, and in, uh, when, whenever people meet me and they get comfortable with me and they ask me, where are you from? I always say, why don't you take a guess? And people always assume that, I am from either Jamaica or some other island in the Caribbean. So the point I'm trying to make is that everywhere I went, people have never suspected that I'm African. So to get a confirmation like this is to me just like mind blowing. And you add the fact that, you know, like all in my family, we have dark, all the way to light skin and so again I have never questioned that because you know like I've never questioned that we were from you know like the same parents even though we looked different in terms of our colors and you add the fact that a lot of people whenever I would argue with people online and you know like maybe we're talking politics or whatever people would say you know, like you are self-hating, blah, blah, blah. Some, someone actually once called my mother a slut because they said, there's no way you could be black, you know, like, and I'm thinking to myself, I've, I've already done a DNA test and I'm just waiting for the results to confirm. So here they are, absolutely happy. Would I have been unhappy if they were different? No, I would not have been, but remember, I've always identified black, so for me, anything else would have been shocking in a way, you know, because I grew up in a black neighborhood, I grew up in a black family, I went to black schools, and so, in, in South Africa, so everything about me, other than my skin tone, is black, so, um,
so again I mean people can make arguments maybe you are not black but I'm just gonna say I identify c culturally as black and and so but anyway so I hope you enjoyed please let me know what you think what you thought I was you know, like just what you thought I, I was what were your expectations of my results but I hope you enjoyed this and to all those people when I was growing up they would call me all these names just know that Africans come in all colors they come in all shapes they come in all sizes okay that's just Africa it's the most diverse continent on earth and that's partly because we the Africans are the first people so everybody begins from Africa and so everybody will look like Africans rather than the other way around so um, a lot of white people and a lot of Asian people look like me, not the other way around. Okay? <laughs> I'm joking. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Okay, bye bye. Okay, so that's the end of the presentation that I had for the. Uh, DNA, I think I may have did a little, have had a little mishap with this. I don't know how the audio is going to sound, but um, yeah, so that was a pretty good um, breakdown of the, um, my, my DNA, um, my thoughts on it. Um, I'm, like she said, she's 100% pleased with her DNA. As sure, I'm, um, and I'm pretty sure that the Europeans that I showed also were 100% um, pleased with their DNA. Um, it seems like the guy out of Oklahoma may have been a little disappointed for whatever reason, but um, in America, to be 100% white would be a great thing, um, you know, um, right now anyway. Um, but as far as my personal take on my DNA, man, like I say, I'm 91%, um, 91.4, 91.8% happy with it. Um, I don't really have any um, objection with the Native American DNA. They've been subjugated as well. Um, however, that DNA got into my DNA. Um, not really a problem. The European DNA is nothing that I could really do about it as well. Um, I'm sure that it happened during the... Um, our um trans our, um doing the transatlantic um part of our um enslavement um during the early part of the transatlantic slave trade um probably doing um the raping of our ancestors so i don't really um welcome that particular if that is the way that that did get into my gene pool i'm not really um happy with that um but other than that, as for me as a person, I'm very happy with who I am. I knew I was African before I took the test. Um, I've been treated like an African before any test was even um, available. So I already knew what I was dealing with here in America. And um, I just want to say, man, everybody needs to um, take a DNA test if they don't believe that they're African. I mean, this this little hour, hour and a half broadcast that I did, um, especially going into my own DNA. I mean, um, and then going into some of the my um, people that I was genetically connected with, as far as far as and I, I at least twenty people, and um, to see very little Native American DNA should um, put all those those answers, all those questions to rest as to who the, who we are. Um, most of us that's here in the Americas are going to have more European DNA based on these tests um, than we're going to have Native American. Um, and the little percentages that we do have, um, based on how I look, if it is a 5% um, Neanderthal DNA, I mean, not Neanderthal, excuse me, if it is a um, 5% European um I don't look that, and um, I haven't been treated that way. I'm, so I'm going to go and roll with the 100% African as well. Um, and um, like I say, I'm proud of that.
So with that said, let me go ahead and get up out of here. I will be trying to bring more content. I'm trying to get warmed up to this. Um, I did a lot of um, readjusting my, my setup here to try to bring um, a better a better show and a better um content and better um better um you know audio to the situation so i'm still working it's a work in progress so with that said let me get out of here because i don't want this to be too long it's already going on a um hour 15 minutes um like i said i hope you enjoyed and um i'll come back with some more commentary soon